just tell you who you are and, and a little bit about yourself. My name is Ron Feldman. I've lived in Arizona since 1968. I came to Arizona actually to first hunt the Lost Dutchman Mine, which is the most famous lost mine in the world actually. I've spent 51 years in and out of the mountains researching it, digging, trying to find uh, true facts. And the first 25 years of my hunting career, I actually followed everybody else's clues, read everybody else's books, followed everybody else's footsteps, and I became an expert on where the Lost Dutchman Mine was not. Now, the next 25 years, I got in some information I was very lucky to learn and research, and it put me kind of in a different area than the Superstition Mountains, the east end of the Superstition Mountains. And the information we follow was all written by a man named Ted Cox. Ted died in 1983, and I was unfortunate not to meet him. I did meet his widow and befriended her, and I received all of the information Ted Cox ever recorded. So my sons and I, we went into the superstitions and spent a two-year sojourn looking for everything he said was there, including what he claimed he found the Lost Dutchman Mine. Wound up finding a Spanish tunnel that was caved in, and the Spanish tunnel supposedly held Spanish bullion from Ted's information. Well, I wanted, I found the area, I found the spot actually, which was caved in, and I wanted to get down into it. Well, how do you do that in a wilderness area? Pretty difficult. In a wilderness, you cannot actually mine and you cannot dig extensively, but there's one way to do it if you kind of prove that there's a possibility that there's man-made treasure that has been buried. Jewelry, coin, gold, bullion, or so forth. I went to the Forest Service, applied for a treasure trove permit, it's called, and it took me five years to hammer it through. We finally received the only treasure trove permit ever issued in the Superstition Mountains, and probably ever will be. I don't think they'll ever do another one. It took us nine months of excavating this tunnel, and we went down in the tunnel. It was an adventure, to say the least. We had uh, archaeologists with us that uh, from ASU that recorded everything. We found things that dated the mine, that it was Spanish indeed. But even above that, the Lost Dutchman, I have hunted treasure all over the United States and actually the world in, in some places. Um, one that I still actively hunt is in outside a tombstone era area, and that was buried by the Clanton Gang, uh, which, of course, everybody knows was involved in the O.K. Corral fight with Wyatt Earp and so forth. I've written three books on a lot of my treasure hunting and uh, hope to do a lot more, of course. I'm going to Florida this May, and we're going to hunt the beach for treasure that was from the 1715 Spanish fleet that washes up on the beaches and I'm going to metal detect the beaches down there for a while. So I do a lot of treasure hunting, I do a lot, I get on people's ranches in Wyoming and Utah and Colorado, I get permission f to gain access to private property to hunt dinosaur bone um, and all kinds of things, fossils and whatnot. And so, so, so real quick on this treasure trove though, um, so, so it took you five years to hammer it through. You figured out how that has to happen. What did that allow you to do? If that was, if you, if there happened to have been treasure there, that would have been yours then, or you had to do a split with the government, or how would that have worked? If, if I actually had found treasure, let's say, then normally what happens, the government, where well, you're working closely with the Forest Service, because they're the ones that are regulating this whole thing, and the government would confiscate everything. And then it would go to arbitration, and usually the finder would get a 60-40 split with the government. So then it would go to the courts and decide yes. who would... So, so yes. are, are, to your knowledge, are them treasure troves still being given, or they're not given, or and, and this was in a, in a wilderness area that yes. you got this. Yes. It yes. was in a wilderness it area. Was not allowed. We were not allowed to use any mechanized machinery, nothing. It all had to be done by hand, the old way. And we, it took us nine months to excavate this old Spanish tunnel. 
and we had to support everything. Everything had to, we had to bring in timbers to resupport this mine as we went down. And so you probably had M. Shaw on you because no. this was the government, or well, actually, M. Shaw, M. Shaw was involved. They came out and inspected us once, and I never saw them again. Okay. So because it was under the auspices of professional archaeologists from ASU, Dr. Glenn Rice, and the Forest Service, I think M. Shaw pretty much gave us the green light. So, so did you have to hire the archaeologists, or uh, you, we, you contracted with them to we, come and... We had to hire our own archaeologists. God forbid the Forest Service would supply their own archaeologists. <laughs> they did come out, and they would inspect you, the archaeologists uh -huh. from the Forest Service, but they wouldn't help you do anything. Right. We had to employ everything. Everything came out of our pocket. It came out of nothing else but our pockets yeah. to do this dig. So, so you said probably won't be given again another treasure trove. Are you talking for, for just the superstitions or any um, wilderness area? That's a good question. I think that possibly will, uh, treasure trove permits may be still being done in other wilderness areas. I don't know that for sure. I can tell you this. I don't think another one will ever be issued in superstitions. Okay. And one of the reasons, and, and let's give the Forest Service their side or their due, let's say. One of the reasons you have to understand that everybody and their grandmother have been to the Forest Service saying, and especially since I was granted a treasure trove permit, now everybody goes yes. for a treasure trove. You gave one to Ron Feldman, we want one. And I'm telling you, 90% of these people can't prove anything. Right. Now, you don't have to prove, we didn't have to prove 100%, we had to give a predominance of evidence that what I said could be there. And apparently we did gain access to the wilderness and, and dug there. But as far as anybody else in the superstitions, the Forest Service is an inundated and a, a lot more since I did the dig. And everybody, it, it's, it's like, I'm sure, crazy. What year was that in? 2005, we were issued the Okay. 2005. Okay. What we do here is I started the OK Corral Stables in 1968. We just moved to our new location here at the Mammoth Mine. And uh, we actually take people into the Superstition Mountains. We take other Dutchman hunters and pack them in uh, and drop them off usually. And then we'll go back and pick them up. We do hourly horseback riding. We have a wonderful mineral and rock shop, fossil shop here, and also an RV horse campground. Uh, that's kind of all that keeps me busy amongst treasure hunting. We still uh, mine for gold very close to this property because when we bought the mammoth, we also bought 19 mining claims. One of the claims we still work, it's called the Black Queen, and we still get gold from it. Cool. So, so you do, you, you take uh, expeditions out just for, for uh, you take a group out just to show them the superstitions and, and that? You take what we do, guided tours just to give people a feel of what's going on out there? And we, we do guided tours in the superstitions as well as hourly riding here in the Goldfield Mountains. And basically, I'd say 50% of the people we take, maybe a little more, they just want to go out and see the, 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 the mountains. They want to hear the lore and the history of it. And then the other percentage are actually the Dutchman hunters. They come to go find the lost Dutchman mine, and we drop them off, pack them in, drop their gear, come back out, go back and pick them up when they want to get picked up. And we've had, as a matter of fact, we have several, a couple groups out right now. And then, uh, so, so, and then we're here in your, your little gift shop, and, and where is this located? Tell people how to... The Riding Stable, the OK Corral Riding Stable, and the Mammoth Mine Gift and Rock Shop are located at 5470 East Apache Trail. That's Apache Junction, Arizona, 85119. And then I see that you've also written several books. I've written, there. actually I've written four books, three of which are available here. Uh, two are sequels, Crooked Mountain, Deep Fall. They are written on the Lost Dutchman Mine. Okay. And actually Double Cross, my third book, is written about the treasure I spoke of down around Tombstone, Arizona. Cool. All right. Well, I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you.